This is going to be a quick tour of the latest version of CircuitPython Beta 4. A Raspberry Pi will be used to set up a Nordic NRF52840 board, run the MU IDE, and test some code including Bluetooth. Adafruit Blinko will also be used to demonstrate Python compatibility between a Pi and a microcontroller. This tutorial will be fast paced, but all the code and notes will be posted on my website. I have six prior MicroPython videos, but they were focused on the ESB32. One of the most popular requests I've received has been to do a project with Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE. The ESP32 supports BLE, but unfortunately as of this video, MicroPython does not support BLE on the ESP32. This will probably change in the future. Meanwhile, I've been very interested in the NRF52840 chip by Nordic Semiconductor. They specialize in low power wireless technology. The NRF52840 runs a 64 MHz ARM Cortex, has a lot of GPIO pins with support for SPI, I2C, I2S, pulse width modulation, PMD, UART, and 12-bit ADC. The chip has a built-in USB controller, NFC support, and many more features, including Bluetooth Low Energy. MicroPython version 1.10 will add limited support for the NRF52 boards, but the setup process will probably be a bit complicated, possibly requiring a tool chain, code compiling, and a hardware debugger to program. However, Adafruit recently released CircuitPython Beta 4, which supports the NRF52840 and in theory should be very easy to use and not require any special programming hardware. I haven't tried CircuitPython, but I have been watching the development. I've been very impressed by the progress and the high caliber of the programmers contributing. Therefore, when Adafruit announced their new Feather NRF52840 Express board, I signed up for the waiting list and I just got one today. The board has 21 GPIO pins broken out with support for 680C and 12 PWM. There's one megabyte of flash, 256 KB of SRAM. Additionally, Adafruit includes two megabytes of QSPY flash for storing CircuitPython files. The board's also compatible with all the existing Feather wings. A quick search of Feather wings on the Adafruit site returned over 50 different boards containing sensors, relays, displays, loggers, motor drivers, GPS, and much more. Here's the Feather NRF52840 on a breadboard. There's a Raytac Bluetooth 5 stack module based on the Nordic NRF52840 with an antenna. All the pins are clearly labeled and breadboard friendly. There's a LiPo battery jack with built-in charging, a USB jack to connect to a computer and provide power, a user switch and a reset button, a standard header for SWD programming and debugging. When I plug in the USB connector into the Raspberry Pi, you can see the blue connection LED and a yellow charging LED. In the center, an RGB NeoPixel, which can be user controlled and provides feedback. There's also a user programmable red LED above the USB jack labeled D3, but it's currently turned off. The board doesn't come with MicroPython installed, but it does come with a USB bootloader, which should make installation very easy. I actually haven't tried this board yet, but I skimmed through the documentation, which is excellent, and it looks very straightforward. On a freshly wiped Raspberry Pi running the latest version of Raspbian, I'll open up a terminal. DFTACH shows no media devices connected to the Pi. Double tapping the reset button on the NRF52840 briefly turns NeoPixel red and then a solid green which indicates the board is in bootloader mode. The Pi recognizes that a new USB media device has been connected. DFTACH again. There's a new entry called Feather 840 Boot. CD to switch to the new drive. LS shows the contents. Current.uf2 is the current contents of the microcontroller flash. It can be easily updated by just copying a new UF2 file to the folder. Here's the Adafruit CircuitPython GitHub repo. I'll click the releases link. CircuitPython 4.0 Beta 0 was just released a few days ago. Since it's a beta, be sure to check out my website for breaking changes. There's support for a lot of different boards. I'll scroll down to the Feather NRF52840 Express UF2 file and click to download it. As soon as the download completes, I'll close the browser and return to the terminal. LS tilde slash downloads shows the CircuitPython UF2 file. CP followed by the UF2 file name space dot copies the UF2 file to the current directory, which is the NRF52840 board. LS shows the UF2 file was copied to the board, and if we wait, the Pi indicates that the NRF52840 device was removed, and another message indicates a new media device has been connected. Clicking OK opens the new CircuitPython device in the file manager. Everything should now be ready. And all we have to do is copy our Python code here. Adafruit recommends using Mu when starting CircuitPython development. Mu is a very simple, intuitive, cross-platform Python editor that has excellent support for CircuitPython programming and file management. Of course, you don't have to use Mu. You can use any editor that writes out the file completely when you save. 
such as VS Code, Sublime, and Vim. To install Mew, click the Pi main menu and then click Recommended Software. Scroll down and select Mew by checking the checkbox. Press OK starts the installation. A few minutes later, Mew is installed. To run the program, click Main Menu Programming Mew. Change the mode from Python 3 to Add a Fruit Circuit Python and click OK. The GUI is very streamlined. New to create a new file, load to load a file from disk, save a file, which should also automatically run your code. Clicking Serial opens up a serial connection to the NRF52840 board. Control D reloads the board, and any other key enters the REPL. I'll press spacebar to enter the REPL. I've gone over the REPL in my previous videos, but basically it's a console similar to Python Idle that lets you type in Python code and see output. There are buttons to zoom out and in. Clicking the theme button changes the skin to a dark theme. The check button tests your code for bugs. Let's try a simple program. Import board. This library contains definitions that are specific to each development board, such as the Feather NRF52840 Express. From digital I.O., import digital in, out, direction, and pull. This library is similar to the MicroPython machine library or the RPI GPIO library and lets you control GPIO pins. I'll define an LED. I'll use the red LED built into the board. I don't know its GPIO number, so I'll use the REPL and import the board library and then type DIR board to see the contents. Looks like there's a red LED definition, so we won't need a GPIO number. LED equals digital in out board dot red LED. LED direction equals direction out because the LED is an output. Notice Mu is auto completing the commands, which clues you into the syntax and speeds up entry. Next, I'll define the onboard user switch. Again, the REPL shows a definition for the switch, which is just switch. Switch equals digital in out board dot switch. Switch direction equals direction input, since the switch provides user input. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but I'll add switch pull equals pull up to pull the switch high so it doesn't float. Therefore, pressing the switch will change the state from high to low or true to false. An infinite while will contain the main program loop. I'll set the LED value to not switch, so opposite of the switch. A press switch will have a value of false, which will set the LED value to true and turn it on. Alternatively, when the switch isn't pressed, its value is true and the LED value will be false or off. If the LED is on, a print statement will be used to display a message to the REPL console. Finally, sleep is used to repeat the loop every half second. Clicking check tests the code, and there's a bug. Looks like I forgot the sleep library. At the top, from time, import sleep. Check again, and we get well done, no problems here. It's not necessary, but I'll press Ctrl D in the REPL to clear the serial and reload. Next, click save to save the code. It defaults to the CircuitPython USB device, which is what we want. The file needs to be called code.py, so it runs automatically. Main.py should also work. Looks like the REPL reloaded with the save. Back on the breadboard, the Neil pixels a steady green, which indicates the program's running. Pressing the user switch turns on the red LED, and the LED turns off when not pressed. It's a little difficult to press the switch because of its close proximity to the debugging header, and there's a little bit of a lag because I'm using a loop. An interrupt would be preferable, but CircuitPython doesn't support interrupts or callbacks yet. Back in Mew, the serial console shows the three switch presses. Unfortunately, everything's working. I was hoping for more debugging. Another feature of CircuitPython that I want to test out is code compatibility with the Raspberry Pi. There's a library called Adafruit Blinka, named after the CircuitPython mascot, and in theory it allows you to run CircuitPython code on the Raspberry Pi and other boards such as the Orange Pi and the Beagle Bone. On the Pi in a blank terminal, I use pip3 to make sure setup tools is up to date. Okay, it's on version 40.7.0. Probably not necessary, but I'll use sudo pip3 install rpi gpio to make sure rpi gpio is installed. The library was already installed. Next, sudo pip3 install Adafruit Blinka. Okay, CircuitPython should now work on the Pi. To reuse my existing code example, I'll connect an LED and a push button switch to the Pi. The LED anode is connected to GPIO 20 on the Pi. The LED cathode is connected to a ground pin with a 330 ohm resistor to limit the current. One terminal of the switch is connected to GPIO 21, the other terminal is connected to ground. Pressing the switch will pull GPIO 21 low to ground. On the breadboard, there's a blue LED, a 330 ohm resistor, and a push button switch. The LED and the switch grounds are connected to a ground pin on the Pi. The LED anode is connected to GPIO 20, the other terminal of the switch is connected to GPIO 21. That's it for the hardware. The Pi now has an LED and a switch to mimic the built-in LED and switch on the NRF52840 board. Back in Mew, I'll highlight and copy the existing code. Then click the Mode button to switch from Adafruit CircuitPython to Python 3 and click OK. 
Next, new to open a new file, paste in the code, and close the previous file. The definition red LED was specific to the NRF52840 board, so I'll change it to 20 for the LED on GPIO 20. The same goes for the switch, which is on GPIO 21. Click check, uh, and there's a bug. It should be D20 and D21. Check again, and awesome, zero problems found. Click save to save the code to the Pi. I'll go with the default folder and call the program Blinka Test 1 and click save. Now just click run. Back on the breadboard, pressing the button turns on the LED. The ability to use the same code on the Pi in a microcontroller is a very useful feature because if you create or download a CircuitPython library, for example a temperature sensor, it should work across multiple devices. It doesn't matter if it's I squared C or SPI, it should be compatible. Off screen I tried a BLE example from the docs, but it didn't work so I asked for help on the Adafruit forum and two of the BLE developers, Dan and Scott, were very quick to respond. They informed me that my release was a few days old and they showed me where to download the latest daily build. Instead of clicking the releases link on the repo, scroll down to download and click continuous builds are available here. Select the Feather NRF52840 Express, then click a language. The top one is January 27th, which is today. Click to download. In Mu, I switch back to Adafruit CircuitPython mode and enter the REPL which shows the NRF52840 is currently running CircuitPython 4 beta 0 with a build date of January 23rd, which is 4 days older than the one I just downloaded. I'll switch to the file manager and open the downloads folder, which contains the new UF2 file. On the NRF52840, I'll double tap the reset button. The NeoPixel turns red and then a steady green to indicate bootloader mode. On the Pi, the bootloader media device is recognized. I'll click OK to open the Feather 84 boot directory and put the windows side by side. Now just drag and drop the new UF2 file and that's all it takes to upgrade the board to the latest version of CircuitPython. I went ahead and rebooted. Now the REPL is showing the new January 27th version. In addition to the CircuitPython core, Adafruit provides a large bundle of libraries such as OneWire, HID, and of course Bluetooth Low Energy, which you can download from the CircuitPython bundle GitHub repo. Scroll down to the Use section and click Latest Release. I'll pick the Beta 4 bundle dated yesterday, January 28th. I took two days off during filming. In File Manager, switch to the Downloads folder and unzip the bundle. Next, find the lib folder and copy it. Then switch to the CircuitPython device folder and paste. Now all the libraries are accessible. I think the next release of Mu will come with third-party library support built in. In Mu, I'll press Ctrl C to stop the last program and spacebar to enter the REPL. From Adafruit BLE.UART, import UART server. This library was included in the previously downloaded bundle. Instantiate a UART server. UART start advertising. The NRF52840 should now be visible to other BLE devices. UART connected is false, which indicates no devices are currently connected. Off camera on my mobile phone, I installed a free app by Nordic called NRF Connect. I'll open the app. The CircuitPython board is showing up as Circu. Click Connect. Connected. My phone is now connected to the board. I can verify by repeating UART connected, which now displays true. On the phone, I'll expand the UART service. To send some data, click the up arrow and type some text. Then press send. In the REPL, UART in waiting indicates five bytes are in the buffer. UART read empties the buffer and shows the message from the phone. On the phone, click the triple down arrow to enable notifications. Now UART write can be used to send a message to the phone, which is promptly displayed. I hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know if you want me to make more CircuitPython or BLE videos. You can support this channel by subscribing, leaving a like, and sharing. Thanks for watching.